live. Coming to you once again with another big fight from the MGM Grand Garden it's Arena in London. Undefeated Vegas. Cuban Guillermo Rigondeau facing Philadelphian Tion Kennedy. Rigondeau up to 127, and Tion Kennedy six pounds heavier unofficially at 133. Let's go to Michael Buffer in the ring for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the MGM Grand Garden here at the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, where tonight Bob Arum's top-ranked boxing, along with MB Promotions, proudly presents an evening of world-class professional boxing for your entertainment. Sponsored by AT&T, Rethink Possible, Tecate Con Character, Smart Communications of the Philippines, and all bouts are sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Skip Avancino, Executive Director Keith Kaiser, Commissioners Francisco Aguilar, Bill Brady, TJ Day, and Pat Lundville. Physicians in attendance at ringside, Doctors Al Capana, Anthony Ruggeroli, James Game, and Vicky Mazzarana. Timekeepers at the bell and counting for the knockdown seconds, James Cavan and Ernie Howdegi. At ringside, the three judges scoring this first contest will be Lisa Jampa, Pat Russell, and Glenn Trowbridge. And inside the ring in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Russell Mora. This contest presented in association with Rigo Promotions. And it's 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Super Bantamweight Championship of the World. <laughs> Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue and weighing in officially at 122 pounds. As a professional, 17 victories, including seven wins by knockout, only one defeat with two bouts even. From the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, he's the challenger, Teon, the technician, Kennedy. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing orange and black, official weight 122 pounds. He's a two-time Olympic gold medal champion, and now as a professional, a perfect record. Nine fights, nine victories, including seven knockouts, originally from Cuba, now living, training, and fighting out of Miami, Florida, USA, the reigning, defending, undefeated WBA super bantamweight champion of the world, Guillermo El Chacal Rigondo. Okay, gentlemen, trunks here are good. Anything below, anything below that line is a foul. We went over the rules in the dressing room. Acuérdese, quiero una pelea limpia. Expect a clean fight. God bless. God bless, Hacha. Rigando or Rigandiao, depending on who you talk to, one of the greatest amateurs of all time, and is a southpaw with real punching power and a real good defense. He has to look spectacular to garner enough fanfare to be worth it for other big name fighters in the lighter weight classes to want to get in the ring with them. I'm going to go for the simpler pronunciation, Max. Rigandau, I believe we'll just live with that one and uh, let those sophisticates who speak Cuban dialect perfectly throw in the E if they wish. Go with that. Or call him Guillermo. He's got spectacular trunks, that's for sure. And uh, Emmanuel, one of the most amazing amateur careers ever. 388 wins in 400 reported fights. I think he would be considered up there with the great T.O. Flair Stevenson as one of the greatest amateur boxers in history. Cuba has produced, of course, a dozen or so fighters with records like that in their amateur careers. A limited array, array of them have appeared in the United States. The most prominent of them, probably Joel Casamayor, who was the opponent in Timothy Bradley's only previous fight here in Las Vegas on the undercard of Pacquiao Marquez last fall. Tian Kennedy's father was a middleweight boxer, and he takes a hard left hand from Rigondeau. The uh, knock against some of the Cuban fighters, and Rigondeau said that he was going to change that tonight, is that they get comfortable winning, as we say, on points, accumulating points. 
And there you see that power. I mean, another great straight left hand, and Kennedy buckled. He buckles again on another one. And Dion Kennedy may have trouble staying on his feet here in the first round if he keeps taking the kinds of shots that Regan Dow is putting on him now. Kennedy fires back. Stop. Russell Moore was watching, and now the glove finally touches the canvas, and Regan Dow gets credit for a knockdown. Five, six, seven, eight. Come here. You okay? You want to fight? Yeah. I'm not sure whether Regan Dow has thudding power, Emmanuel, but he, he lands his shots very precisely and very accurately and seems to land them where he wants, when he wants, such as that uppercut right there. I am very impressed. Not only is he punching very accurate, I think he has good power, placing his punches good, and he's trying to make a statement tonight to show that he can punch and not just win points and lay back and come on later on at the end maybe, but he's trying to get, get score a knockout, and he's placing and mixing up his left hands properly. By the way, I think... Rigandau is a devastating puncher. Uh, he's just not in the package that we're used to seeing punchers. He's primarily a defensive fighter who doesn't throw a tremendous volume, but not only is he precise, he has concussive power in one shot. A power counter puncher? Yeah. And, you know, he's studying exactly the position to throw his left hand. He's studying all of the movements of Kennedy where he can feel whether I can throw it through the center this time. Next time, I'm going to throw it on the side. He's mixing it up. Or uh, either I'll let Kennedy throw a right hand and I'll counter it by shooting my left hand after he misses. That's a great point, Emmanuel. He's thrown the left hand straight. He has swept it. He has thrown it as an uppercut. And uh, as, as you say, focusing on all of the various ways in which he can hit the target. Time. Remarkable hand speed by Yermo Rigandel in the first round, and he scored a knockdown over Deion Kennedy. Right in front of him. He turned to the left. Listen, man, you get hit with a good shot. Don't try to be manning up. Grab him and hold him. All right? Then use your legs. Are you okay? Now? Stay standing there, straight up. All right? Keep moving on. Keep going to the outside. Touch the move to the outside, Rigo. And use the jab. Use the jab so he doesn't come in. Use your jab. When you throw the jab, he doesn't throw the right. When you bring it down, then it comes in. Here we see the punch that started the problem, which was a left hand after he let Kennedy throw a right, and he counted over. But what was also equally as impressive that all of his punches he was shot was very clearly well-placed punches, and probably about 80% landed, which is very unusual. Even though Kennedy has his defense up, he still found ways to get between the gloves and outside of the gloves. That look shows you that the left glove touched the canvas. That's why it was ruled a knockdown at that point. Top your box numbers one-sided. Rigondeau, 18 of 26. That's 69%. These are power shots. Kennedy, 1 of 10. Only threw 10 power shots in the uh, entire round. Kennedy is fighting a good fight. He hasn't did anything wrong. He hasn't really made any mistakes. It's just the accuracy and experience of his opponent that's been able to find gaps and to be able to land the punches. But he himself is fighting a very good fight. You heard the piece of advice his father gave him in his corner. Said, uh, you know, look, when you get tagged like that, don't man up and try to prove how strong you are. Grab him and hold him. On a Pacquiao undercard in uh, at the end of 2010, um, in November, Rigando fought Ricardo Cordoba. We called that fight. And with high expectations coming in, he really struggled and eked out a split decision against a tough guy, but in terms of talent, a more ordinary kind of guy. And I think that really hurt him because it gave people an excuse not to fight him as though they didn't already have one, you know, southpaw with punching stop, power and defense. Stop. Because he wasn't exceptionally exciting, even though it was a, a, a tough fight. It was only his seventh pro fight. It was the first time he went 12 rounds. But because of his amateur background, he's perceived as this, you know, real veteran fighter already. Referee Russell Moore a moment ago did a good job of breaking up a potential tackle before either fighter hit the floor. He had to move quickly to do it and got it done. <laughs> and you notice Rigger now does not use his jab much. He doesn't use his right hand too much. He basically concentrates on trying to set up opponents for a good left hand shot, whether it's a left uppercut, straight through the middle, a left on the side. There's a left uppercut. Doesn't use his right jab too much. He places his punches mainly with his left hand. 
Fascinating the way he set up the uppercut, and there's a perfect straight left hand and the Three, second knockdown of the fight. Four, five, Remarkably six, accurate punching so seven, far. Yes, and, 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 eight, and Kennedy okay? hasn't did anything yeah. wrong. Want to fight? Jump in. When you say anything wrong, Emmanuel, you mean no, no, no glaring no, mistakes, you know, mistake. no cardinal Stop. sins. Right, throwing his punches too far back, getting out of balance. It's just that Rigado is studying and knowing exactly where to throw those left hand shots at. <laughs> in and 21 win. fights, Tion Kennedy's <laughs> only been knocked down three times, two of them in the first two rounds here. Coming in in 20 fights, he had only been knocked down once. And he almost went down on two separate occasions in the first round before he actually went down. That was remarkable right there. Another combination on an uppercut, and there's the third knockdown of the fight. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Come here. Okay. Interesting thing is he's not badly hurt. He's just mm, getting nope. knocked down by perfect shots. Perfect shots. Keep going straight back, that right hand. Keep going straight back. Here we see Rigando just placing his punches very well, anticipating the position of Kennedy's right hand. We went directly through the center this time, just as Kennedy was jabbing. And now he comes right back with another one of them straight through the center again. And here we see the next knockdown, which is right on the side of the head. Just as Kennedy was punching himself and left himself slightly open. So as we come to round number three, Tian Kennedy has been knocked down three times by Guillermo Rigondeau in the first round, uh, first two rounds. Once in the first, twice in the second. Emmanuel, I know Tian Kennedy isn't exactly Abner Morris, but to my eye, there are three guys, three fighters, 126 and below, who I think have separated themselves from everyone else. I think Nonito Donaire is one. I think Gary Russell Jr. is going to be another. And I think Rigondia, uh, Rigondo is in that category. I agree with you 100%. Great assessment. And I would love to, when those fights take place to be there. To those are the them. three. Yes. If I had a fighter, if I managed a fighter 126 pounds or below, I'd try to avoid those three. Two of them are southpaws. Russell has extraordinary hand speed and uh, a very polished southpaw style. A fight between him and Rigandau would be fabulous, it, it seems to me. The two lefties, both with power and with speed. Eventually, they're bringing Russell along slowly. He's so dominant that, you know, he's, he's just totally dominating solid but unspectacular opposition. Uh, maybe he's not quite ready yet, but he should be soon. More likely you would see Rigandau at some point against Donaire because they share the same promotional tie. And they're, as, we mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, Rigandau is not a seasoned professional veteran, but with 300, whatever it is, pro, uh, amateur fights. 400 amateur fights, 388 wins, according to the record. I've also seen reports of a 243 and four record for Rigandau. So who knows? So who knows which it is? But um, those three, I think, are the special talents below 126. <laughs> Maris is a volume puncher. Oh, and he's, he's a <laughs> tremendous fighter and real fun to watch. But I think in terms of pure talent, uh, maybe a half step below the other guys that I just mentioned. Kennedy has avoided getting hit cleanly with that left hand of Rigondon. As a result, it's been a fairly interesting round. Even though he hasn't been able to land any clean punches, he's watching out for the variety of left hand punches from Rigondon and has kind of neutralized the attack of Rigondon at this point. Looks as though Kennedy has stepped up the foot movement just a little bit, circling more constantly to try to stop Rigondeaux from landing that rhythmic left hand. 
He's watching that left hand most of that. Ah. <laughs> Jim has the guard. June 16, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. defends his middleweight championship against Ireland's Andy Lee. July 7, it's a unification matchup as Nonito Donaire and Jeffrey Matabula put their 122 pound titles on the line. Also that night, always entertaining Brandon Rios faces Mauricio Herrera. He throws a punch. When he throws okay. a jab, do the counter punch and then finish off with the swing. This is the fourth round. Guy's done. Got to work the body more. It's going to be more consistent with your attack. More consistent. You got to throw more punches. The guy's done. You throw a combination. He throws a combination because you let him, let him fill. You got to finish him off. Seldom will you hear a more one-sided copy box report than the following power shots through three. Rigondahl, 36 out of 67. He's landing 54% of his power shot. Kennedy, four out of 31. He lands four power punches in three rounds. So uh, that gives you a hint as to how Harold Letterman may have scored the first three rounds. <laughs> Harold, how do you have it? You know, Jay, I got three to nothing. 30 to 24, Guillermo Rigondeaux. Y you know, w when you're up by six points after three rounds in a 12-round fight, it's going to be hard as the devil to for Tion Kennedy to box his way back into this fight. Guillermo deserves an extra point in round number one for one knockdown. And then when he dropped him twice in the second round, he gets a 10-7 round. And he won the third round because Rigondeaux, you know, looked real good. He landed good shots. So Rigondeau by six, but I, I got to tell you, if Rigondeau was a finisher, he would have jumped on him in the first round and got him out of there. Three or nothing, Guillermo Rigondeau. Well, that goes back to what we were talking about in the first round. A power counterpuncher, a guy who takes his opportunities and uses them perfectly, but who isn't exactly aggressively coming forward to try to get you all the time. And that comes a lot from too many amateur fights, too. No, don't let him go. Let him go. Don't hold him. Especially with don't the system him. that he's been, you know, brought up under, which is that computer. Get a point. Stay ahead. Don't take too many chances. Get your point again. Stay ahead. But I think Max accurately described what we saw in the Cordoba fight, and clearly he has improved and developed more of a professional style since then. But Kennedy has not been able to mount any type of an attack, but Cordoba carried it to him and challenged him a lot more. Kennedy came down, and basically Kennedy is doing, what he's doing is trying to stay out of the way of the left hand punches for the most part, but he hasn't been able to do anything offensive himself. He's throwing the right hand, even the jab, so gingerly, you wonder if there's something wrong with it, uh, bring it down. You know, he taps him with the right hook. He's not throwing it with real force. Great point. He saves the real force for his left hand. I think he's trying to soften it up and relax Kennedy a little bit. So every punch he was doing, was throwing the first few rounds was all power shots. And he's trying to relax, touch him lightly, and then load up with the power shots. I'm fascinated with Rigondeaux's full feints, Emmanuel. It's as though he rehearses the whole punch before he throws it. In, in the second round, twice, he put the left hand out there very slowly and brought it back. Second time, he brought it back. Then he launched and threw a perfect power shot that knocked Kennedy down. Yeah, he's trying to pull Kennedy in, but he's really beautiful in terms of his defense. He maintains perfect balance. He slides just enough to make the opponent miss a punch, but still keeps himself in position to punch back. Get him up, get him up. Come here, come here. Okay, let's go. Knockdown number four. Every one of them on a straight Four, left hand. Yep. Five, six, seven, eight. Come here. Took my foot though. All right. He hit you. He hit yeah, you. Yeah, but he took my foot too. Time. Hey. Right here. Go ahead and get down. Listen, you're going to have to be a little bit more aggressive now. All right, we got to take some chances, man. All right? Got to start stepping out a little bit more. All right? A little bit more. Okay? Get water out. You guys okay? Yeah. You guys all right? Everybody doing okay? I'm good. Okay. All right. Kennedy told the referee that Rigado had stepped on his foot, and as we could see, that is exactly what had happened.
in addition to getting hit with a beautiful left hand. So legally, was still a knockdown. If the referee didn't see, I didn't consider that he stepped on his foot. Could he, could he have ruled it not a knockdown because, uh, because that's a good, that's a good question. That's a good question. I really don't know. That's Harold, is there, Harold, is there any rule about that? You know, it's the referee's call. I mean, if the referee says that he went down because the other guy stepped on his foot, he could Watch call it. But, Watch you know, feet. it would really be a stretch because he got hit with, with a left hand when he went down. <laughs> I remember Rigondeau being hit with one shot so far in this fight. Um, Tion Kennedy tripled up on a jab, and the last one hit Rigandau, and Rigandau was like surprised by it. <laughs> and that was. Were you a, surprised as well? Yeah, I mean, it, good, by the way, that's what happens when you triple up on a jab sometimes. But um, otherwise, this is gym work for Rigandau. Remarkably one sided. Unbelievable balance, though, in position of Rigandau. He slips, punches, and avoids him, and still is always in a great position. And he has just enough to make his opponent miss. Slips four straight punches, as you saw. Blocks the next punch with his lead hand. Now he rehearses punches again and lands the straight left. That is amazing, Jim. I've never seen that I've to never seen that anybody extent do it. before. It's not a feint. He's not tricking the guy. Knockdown That's number it. five. Good stoppage. And Russell Moore is going to stop the fight. Good stoppage. Tremendous technical knockout performance by Guillermo Rigondeau. I'm convinced. I'm buying. Want to see him again whenever I can. Yep, and if he gets that right hand on track, sets some guys up with the jab and is a little busier. And that was a, a technical knockdown. Technical skills all yep. the way. Yep. Clean, precision, technical punches. Brilliantly done. And uh, only the second loss of Tion Kennedy's career. Again, he came into the fight having been knocked down once in his career. They may have to give him two losses and for that And if the one last thing. one was ruled a knockdown, he was knocked down five times in this fight. Yeah, that might count for two losses, Jim. I don't know, but that was a dominant, dominant win. Yep. Glove touched the canvas, so indeed, five knockdowns in the fight. And at no time was really Kennedy in really, really serious, serious bad condition. Just he couldn't avoid getting hit with those clean precision punches coming from Ligondar. I'm reminded of the night that Floyd Mayweather knocked down Diego Corrales five times, also with precise, accurate punching. T.I. Kennedy's no Diego Corrales, but of course still, not. But he's good enough that you shouldn't be able, as you said, to fully rehearse combinations before you throw them and then throw them and they land exactly as you imagine. What is he operating in the Matrix? <laughs> <laughs> One whale of a show by Rigondeau, and let's go up to Michael Buffer for the official result. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the MGM Grand, referee has to call a halt to the bout following that last knockdown. The official time is one minute, 11 seconds, round number five. The winner by knockout victory, still undefeated and still WBA Super Bantamweight, champion of the world, Guillermo. Hey, Chicago, Rigondeau!